Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yoyis and on my channel I teach you guys everything you guys need to know about lash extensions. And for today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to do a fill on a wispy set. So for today's products, I'm going to be using the Live Bay Lash Curvy Bay Tweezer for isolation. And also for isolation, I'm going to be using the Yegi Beauty G2. And to make my fans, I'm going to be using the Soko Lashes 45 degree angle tweezer. And I'm also going to be using the Soko Lashes primer and sealer and their Stay Wild glue. It is a one second glue, so it is pretty fast. And you already know I'm going to start off by washing their lashes with my DIY lash bath, which it is made out of the Prolong Concentrate. I do have a video on how I make my lash bath. So if you are interested, make sure to go check that video out. So I always wash wash my clients lashes no matter what and great retention comes from clean lashes so take that as a step to clean your clients lashes before each application I'm telling you guys washing your clients lashes will make a big difference so now I'm going in with the Soko lashes primer yes I always wash and prime my clients lashes every single time doesn't matter if it's a full set or a fill doing these extra steps will completely change the game for you guys I cannot stress this enough even if you just prime their lashes it's still not good enough because primer doesn't really help remove all the excess oils that are stuck in your clients lashes so please do yourself a favor and do both of these steps it will completely change everything for you guys so once I prime their lashes I go in and make sure everything is completely dry and ready to go for application okay guys now for the fun part you guys have been asking for this particular lash map and technically I do have one similar to this lash map but you guys wanted to know so here it is so I am going to start off with the outer corners and the first numbers I'm going to write down are the spikes which is the longer lengths so I'm going to start off with 17 16 15 14 13 12 and 11 in the inner corner and then I'm going to work my way down with the shorter lengths from 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 okay just to refresh I'm gonna start from the inner corners out the spikes being 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 the longer lengths and the shorter lengths you're gonna go in with 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so I will have the complete lash map in the description box. That way you guys can easily follow along. I know it gets a little confusing when you just see it in video. So I'm going to write it down for you guys. That way you guys can write it down or simply screenshot this. That way you know exactly what to do. Um, one thing I will recommend is that you do need to have a little experience with lash mapping. Because if you do it like this your first time it'll be a little difficult so this video is meant for people who already have a little experience with lash maps and as you can see here i am going to be going in and removing out all the grown-out lashes since this is a fill i don't recommend to remove all her lashes just because you'll be left with nothing so you will see that i will leave quite a few lashes there that look like they need to be removed but i don't just because i want to leave some lashes you know so she could have some left so don't be alarmed if you see that I left quite a few lashes in there um, I feel like you can get away with leaving lashes in there as long as they're not fully grown out like this one if you notice that you do have a lot of grown out lashes then remove as many as you want but if there only is a little bit of growth I will not remove them because there is no point so I'm only removing the ones that are really really grown out because you really don't want to leave lashes that are fully grown out because the weight of them will end up causing damage. So as you can see, I'm just going through the lashes and seeing which ones are completely fully grown out and um, we go from there. So I do like to do the banana peel and if you're not familiar with the banana peel, pretty much you grab the extension doesn't matter if it's from the base or the tip. I like to grab it from the tip and then I grab the natural lash and just peel it like a banana peel. So as you can see here, you grab the extension, 
grab their natural lash and pull them away from each other. That should separate them without causing any damage to the lash. I know there's a lot of different ways that you could do this, but this is the way that works for me. So again, I'm just going in through all the lashes, seeing which ones need to be removed. And I'm going to put some music here. That way you guys can enjoy me removing all the grown out lashes. So I'll be right back. May the good turn bad Need to wake up cause I'm far away So I won't go Okay guys, so I wanted to show you guys real quick what clean lashes looks like. If you remove out their grown-out lashes and you pay attention to them, that's how they should look like. Really clean and beautiful. So now I'm going to go in and start doing the fill. So I am so sorry about my glasses getting in the way. <laughs> I tried out a new angle for you guys this time and it really wasn't working. I mean, I managed to make it work, but my glasses just kept getting in the way. So I guess it'll have to do. So here I'm going in with 17 millimeter lashes and I am pretty much just going in and putting in the spikes. If you guys are new to my channel and don't know what I mean by spikes, then I recommend to go watch my other wispy videos. That way you guys can understand what it is that I'm doing here. So I'm pretty much just going in with the longer lashes and looking to see where I want to add a spike. I feel like with Phil, it's a lot easier to do because there is no right or wrong way when it comes to doing a wispy set fill I pretty much just go in there and pretty much just see where I want to add a spike Like I said, there's no right or wrong way So this is pretty much where your artistic side is going to come from and like I said, just go in there, you know, start looking around, trying to see where a spike needs to be added. So I'm just going to go down the lash map and see where I need to add a spike. And like I said, there's no right or wrong way. Just have fun with it, you know. If you've already been doing wispy sets and just wanted to know how it is that I do a fill, this is pretty much how I do it. There is no right or wrong way. I'm just eyeballing. I feel like with wispies, it's all about eyeballing, especially if you're trying to get that really wispy look I feel like the wispier you want them the more spikes you add I'm not counting how many spikes I'm adding I'm just going in there and adding and just seeing where I want to add one just have fun with it enjoy it and just get creative but if you're the really melancholy type and you need to know how many spikes I added I normally add about three to four spikes per section I mean like I said I don't normally count when it comes to fills but if you really want to know then and just add about three to four spikes in each section so again I'm just going down the lash map and seeing where I need to add a spike when it comes to a fill on a wispy set I think the most important step is making sure you get those wisp or spikes down if you already tried doing a wispy set and you kind of got the hang of you know what it means to add the spikes and then the shorter lashes the filler you know lengths then doing a fill will be a lot easier for you like I said, you can just have fun with it, get more creative, add more spikes, add less spikes, do whatever you want to do. But 
when it comes to a wispy set and a fill, the more spice you add, the wispier it is. So get creative, you know, really get down with those wisps and just have fun with it, you know. So again, guys, I'm going to just finish off adding the spikes. So I'm going to add some more music here and let you guys enjoy the rest of the process. And I'll be right back. Visions mixed up with reality. Make my mind unclear. The foggy waters I am floating on. Okay guys, now that I finished adding all the spikes, I'm going to go in and start filling her up with the shoulder lengths and I always start off with the inner corners for some reason. I feel like I get done faster this way. So I'm using tape to pull back her lashes. That way I could get right in there, get in there really, really good. So this is a hybrid set. So I'm going to be adding fans, about 70 to 10 D fans and I'm also going to be adding classics. So I'm not sure if I mentioned in the beginning, but I am using all Soko Lashes products. So I'm using the 0.04 Mega Volume Lashes, and they are Mega Volume, but you can use them for volume fans. It's totally fine. And I am using the 0.15 Classic Lashes. At least for me, when I do hybrid sets, I feel like 0.15s just blend in so much better with a hybrid set. If you use anything bigger than a 0.15, they are going to be very, very noticeable. So use a 0 0.15, 0 0.12, 0 0.10. That way they look more natural and blend in with those volume fans. So again, my volume fans are 7D to 10D. So that means 7 little lashes within that fan. So again guys, I'm just going in and filling her up. And I do tend to lash 190 to 100%. That will give you the best retention because you give them more to work with. So try to fill them up as much as you can especially for fills if they're coming in with 50 to 60 percent of their lashes then your job is to get them full i'm talking about full full not just full but i'm saying full full so now i'm just going up the lash map and right now i'm currently working on 10 millimeter lashes so i feel like when it comes to my hybrids there is no right or wrong way or at least the way that I do them. I don't do classic classic hybrid. Like I just, I have fun with it. You know, if I feel like a fan should be right there, then I'll add a fan. If I feel like I need to add a classic, then I'll add a classic. So for this set in particular, I added more fans than classics. She wanted a, a soft look, but yet a little fuller, you know. So the fact that she doesn't have that many lashes to work with, she has very light lashes. So I added a little more fans to get her a little more full. So if you have been wondering how to get your hybrid sets to look more full, then I recommend to add more volume fans that will give you a darker look but yet still soft at the same time if you want more of a softer look more lighter lashes then you add more classic lashes less fans more classics so again you want them to be a little fuller more volume fans you want them to be a little lighter more classic lashes but for her in particular like i said she doesn't have that many lashes so i ended up adding more volume fans so again it all depends on your client's natural lash if they have light lashes like my client but they want them a little fuller but still want a hybrid look to them then add more volume fans but if they tend to have more lashes but want them softer add more classics and less fans so again it all depends on your clients and what they want and how their natural lashes are so what works for my client here will probably not work for your client depending on what she wants so it's okay to play around you know just have fun the whole point of lash extensions is to have fun with them enjoy it enjoy the process and you know just have fun doing it so now that I finished inner corners I'm going to use the same tape and lift her eyelids 
off from the iPad. That way I don't get any stickies. If you do struggle with this, I do have a taping video where I show you guys how to use tape to help you pretty much with anything. So I do use tape to lift her eyelashes off the iPad. That way you don't get any lashes stuck to the iPad. So now I'm just going to go ahead and finish pretty much doing the whole fill. So I am going to add some more music and I'll be right back if I need to give you guys any more tips. One thing that I did want to mention and I wanted to do an actual video just talking about fills and why it's so important to do a fill. So if you guys weren't taught how to do a fill or why it's so important to do a fill, then let me explain a little bit. So the reason why you want to do a fill every two weeks and I say this because it's very important, three weeks is pushing it, every two weeks is the basic, you pretty much need to remove lashes every two weeks because your lashes go through a cycle where by the second or third week, your lashes are almost fully grown out. So you do need to be on top of their lash growth because the longer you leave a lash on there, the heavier it gets and that can cause damage to your client's lashes. So I'm not sure if I showed in this video just because I kept editing and skipping a lot of parts but I am skipping all the small baby lashes. You definitely do not want to lash anything that is really small or baby length. If your client has really short lashes then that all depends but you definitely don't want to be lashing really small baby lashes so make sure that you are only lashing the medium to longer lengths just because if you lash the baby once, you're going to damage them. So stay away from those. And I'm not sure if you know, but our lashes go through a cycle. And there are three phases in which our lashes grow. So you have the growth phase, which is the antigen. And that is the baby ones. You definitely want to stay away from all baby lashes. And then you have degradation phase, which is the catagen. And that is pretty much the teenager phase. You do want to lash those because most of your client's lashes are teenager phase. And then you have the last phase, which is the resting adult phase, <laughs> which is called the telogen, and that is the adult lash, and those are the full outgrown lashes. So most of your client's lashes will be in the teenager or the adult phase. This one right here, as you can see, is full on adult phase. Like, look how long it is. That is what you would consider an adult, which is the telogen phase. And the reason why I'm explaining this is because it's very important. You do need to understand the growth cycle of your your client's lashes because you definitely do not want to be lashing baby lashes. If you are lashing baby lashes, you can potentially damage your client's lashes to the point where their lashes don't grow out anymore. So please be careful, only be lashing. As you can see that, that little one right there, that's a baby lash. And I placed it on the adult lash. And as you can see, I move it, it's not stuck to that baby lash. It's all the way in the back. So it was safe to apply there. So again, guys, be careful on what you are lashing. So I'm pretty much finishing up here. And that pretty much wraps up today's video. So I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to to subscribe if you are new here your love and support means the world to me and go at me on instagram let's go be friends so again if you are new here make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you guys don't miss out on future lash content so thank you guys so much for watching your support means the world to me and i'll see you guys in my next video bye we don't need any more heartache may the good turn to wake up cause I'm far away so I